We also watched AEW Dynamite The Crossroads, also on March 3rd, 2021. And we open, much to my surprise, with Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet versus Shaquille O'Neal and Jade Cargill. Red Velvet is tiny. I think there's almost as big a size discrepancy between the women as the men. I think Shaq's feet were bigger than Red Velvet. Like, you look at Shaq. He's a giant, obviously, right? He's, I think he's 7'2". He's a huge, huge, huge person. But he has giant feet for a 7'2 man. <laughs> His feet are just monstrous. His wrestling basically considered of clubbering forearms and a couple of big overhand chops, and they were awesome. Because he does the big, big show chop with a big, big mitt coming down on the guy's chest. But, and it makes a very, very loud noise, but it's not like he follows through with it. He hits it, and his hand bounces backwards. But it still makes a great, great, great noise. That was the best thing he did by far. And about the only thing he did by far, because if this match went 12 minutes, 10 and a half of it was the women doing stuff in there. Yeah, but you know what? The Shaq... I know it's probably going to make people mad, but... Who cares? He's really, really, really big. Word. And you know who else is really, really, really big? It actually almost exactly the same size is Omos. I see, okay. And I got nothing against Omos. I like the guy, but not for one second ever has he looked as intimidating no. as Shaq looked at every moment in this match. True. This fucking guy, this Shaq, was Andre the Giant. They literally booked this guy like Andre. He didn't sell nothing. And when he got in there, he ran roughshod. And he did no more than he was able to do. Mm -hmm. He threw his chops. He fucking hit Cody with the best powerbomb I ever saw. It was a beautiful powerbomb. It really was. He was fucking killing guys with body slams outside the ring later. Like, he was a, he was a fucking giant. An unstoppable. Everything that Hogan you say about the giant. A big, fat, smelly, fire-breathing giant. That's what Shaq was. He was neither stinky nor water-infested, I believe. God damn, he was awesome. Yes, he got into a shoving match with the gun club, which turned into a war with a gun club, and the gun club should have had actual guns. They would have fared better. Uh, but yes, he's slamming them on the floor with ease. He's a big, strong, powerful man. But it was mostly the women. And as we talked about going in, in particular Red Velvet, but also Jade Cargill, they had the most to win or lose in this match. If this is a bad match for Cody or Shaq, who cares? And frankly, if it's a bad match for Jade, looking the way Jade does, she's going to get more chances. If this has been a bad match for Red Velvet, I don't know if she ever would have gotten another chance this big. I thought they did a very good job. Dude, they were awesome. This match, yeah. this was not a five-star match. Certainly not. But it was a perfect match. It was a, like, it was a, it was the two and three-quarter star match it needed to be. It could not have been better. No, like no. Fact, everybody, I, everybody, Shaq, mm -hmm. Jade, Red Velvet, Cody, everybody had a very specific role to play, and they all played it perfectly. Like, I'm not even sure if you did this match ten times, you would get a better no, one. Maybe no. you would. The last thing I wrote was, they hit this out of the park, could not possibly have gone any better. So I don't have all of the details, and part of that is because, you know... I don't think everybody knew everything, but I, I talked to several people, and what I have gathered is that Shaq has been training for a while. I don't know how long. I know there were rumors that he'd been secretly training since the summer. I don't know if it's been that long. I believe he was training with QT Marshall, okay? Mm -hmm. I did hear from multiple people that it was everything that we heard about Pat McAfee. He was... Despite what you may have seen on the videos, where he would appear to be very lazy and yes. half half caring, this guy took it very seriously. He worked his ass off. He was nice to everybody. He was polite and humble. Everything you heard about McAfee. Although one person said that he also, he was, I guess old school would be the term, even though he's a rookie, but... He showed up, like, two hours before the show started. Like, everyone else supposed to be there super early. Shaq just saunters in a couple hours before they go on the air, which, since he was on first, like, he was there two hours before the match. And he just got all his stuff on like an old-school guy. He'd show up whenever, got in the ring, red light turned on, and this motherfucker was on! 
Yes. I was so impressed with Shaq. Like, I wish he was... I don't want to be a regular, but I wish he was, like, signed. He, he and every quarterly. six months, he'd be Andre. Yes, yes, yes. Now, he, first of all, we should note his perfect power bomb also included a Brody Lee, Brody Lee tribute, so that was awesome. Yep. There was one point in the middle of the match, Cody's making a comeback. and In fact, it was right after the power bomb. Cody is like, he does the punch from his back spot, and he jumps up, and he grabs the giant, and his body slams him out of nowhere. And first of all, I don't know why... You know, you can get a lot of mileage out of a very simple body slam by teasing and building it. If you watch any Hulk Hogan match from about 1985 to 89 or so, you will see this done perfectly. So why you would do it randomly in the middle of the match with no build, I don't know why. Second of all, Shaq is a rookie. So unless you count the Mania Battle Royal, his first match, so he doesn't really know how to take a body slam. So he jumps into Cody's arms. He wraps his legs and his arms around Cody's torso. He's a post up at all. Cody is trying to hold the giant in the air. It doesn't work. He just falls. You know what it was? They just move on. It actually looked remarkably like the Hogan Andre slam. Because that was not all. That also was not like the huge one. That was also like a weird, and he kind of just dumps the guy. That, that was, it, was, it was. It was not a perfect body slam. It was better than this one. The reason, Vinny, is because mm. as you noted, if the match went eleven minutes, Shaq was in for ninety seconds. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, in nineteen eighty-seven, their big high spot was a body slam. That is also true. You do it at the end. These guys' big high spot was Cody doing a high cross over the top, putting Shaq off the apron through two tables, which exploded like a fucking atomic bomb going off. That did. That did. That trumped the body slam. Well, I suppose it did. I suppose it did. Uh, Jade Cargill, uh, we talked about this uh, during her training videos. If she, if she can work at all, she's going to be a huge star. It's very clear she can work at all. She's going to be a huge star. Uh, she won here with, I believe, the glam slam. I, 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 I remember when... Uh, Beth Phoenix started using that move. I compared it to the bitch clamp, which is a similar but not the same move. But anyway, she pinned red and made a nice smile for the camera like a true star should. Yeah, yeah, this is a win. So Shaq, as you noted, uh, <laughs> Cody, like I, I'd heard Shaq went through the tables, but there's a million ways you could do that. I didn't know specifically what happened. Shaq's standing in the apron with the tables behind him, and Cody does this big ass running, barely in control dive over the ropes on the Shaq, who who did in fact catch him and then fall backwards. But it looked awesome. So Shaq is dead. He is not moving. His eyes are closed. You hold a mirror up to his nose. I'm not sure it would have fogged up. They get him into the ambulance barely. He barely fits because he's a giant. And then Tony interrupts interrupts the EMTs who are trying to take him to a hospital and perhaps save his life for an interview, which seems unprofessional to me. But then he opens the door and Shaq has vanished. That was weird. Where the fuck did Shaq go? How do you get rid of a guy that big? I don't it's not like know. they put Marco in that ambulance. No, I They don't thought know. he vanished. He was just underneath the thing or something. Yeah. Or he fell into a box. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.